Hi, I'm Mike Lee with Team Horizon, and this is a Team Tech Tour. In this tech tour, I'm going to show you around the Spectrum DX9 to give you a better look at this very well-appointed radio and with more info than you might get in the page of a magazine. We're going to get up close and personal with the DX9, but let me give you a little background on the DX9 before we take the tour. It's been called the Poor Man's DX18, or the radio with the babe on board. But no matter what you call it, the DX9 has got it all. Looks, ergonomics, a voice that gives you in-flight information, and top-notch programming options. The DX9 is quite similar to the top-of-the-line DX18, both in looks and in programming. In fact, you can swap model profiles between the two radios easily by using the onboard SD memory card. The program is very powerful and robust, providing an amazing range of flexibility for the most demanding pilots. The physical size and shape is designed to give you a relatively light chassis that feels solid and comfortable. All the option switches and knobs are placed within easy reach of your fingers and space to allow free movement without bumping other switches. Electronically, the DX9 is not only reliable, but very fast on the signal with a resolution of 2048 per second. This is the radio is designed to serve pilots who are serious about their hobby, but not necessarily professional. It's time to look closely at the DX9. At first glance, the DX9 is truly modern looking without frills to distract you. Noticeable is a grill along the right side of the large LCD display. This is a reminder of one of the awesome features of the DX9, this being the voice alerts. You may program the voice alerts from a wide range of choices already a part of the software, as well as change the type of voice. If you wish to keep the alerts discreet, the DX9 has a headphone jack on the back of the case to make things more private. I mentioned the LCD display screen, and the DX9 has one of the largest display screens of any transmitter on the field. It is backlit for viewing, even in broad daylight. When you wish to fly using the airborne telemetry, the large screen makes it easier to grab a glance at the display for a quick update. In the middle of the transmitter are two ball bearing mounted control gimbals that are as smooth as they get, thanks to a solid mounting frame inside the casing. All trim tabs are digital trims with variable trim step capability for making exact trim settings. The control sticks can be configured to match mode 1, 2, 3, and mode 4 stick styles by adjusting the channel adjustment and spring tensions on the gimbals. The sticks themselves are adjustable in length to suit your individual style and fit. Between the stick gimbals is a Spectrum logo which lights up when the power is applied or when the transmitter is charging up. Let's look now at the upper left quadrant. On the front face of the left quadrant we find the three position switch C which is traditionally the elevator dual or triple rate switch. Next to this is switch D, also a three position switch. This will be used possibly for changing flight modes, a three position flap action, or any other application you assign to the switch. Just inside of switch D is a left trimmer. This may be assigned to any channel to provide a secondary trim function. Sailplane pilots love this switch to retrim the trailing edge of a model when needed to enhance the wing airfoil. On the top shoulder of the case is switch A, a two position switch commonly used for the retractable landing gear. In front of that is switch B, another three position switch. As we move toward the antenna tower, we find switch I, which is used for binding or activating the wireless trainer mode. Let's move on over to the right quadrant. On the right quadrant, we find switches F and E with switch F being used as traditional aileron dual and triple rate switch. Switch E is being used as a flight mode switch in many cases. Just inside switch E is a right trimmer switch. Again use it as a traditional trimmer for any channel you wish. On the top of the right shoulder is a two position switch H to the rear and in front of that is switch G to the front, a three position switch. Moving towards the antenna tower we find the right knob capable of allowing a variable control function to any channel you select. Remember that all switches can be custom assigned by the pilot to any channel desired through the powerful software package of the DX9. Moving around the size of the DX9, you can see the ergonomic contour of the DX9 case. Designed for a comfortable feel and non-slip grip with the use of the special rubber grips along the sides and the rear. At the top rear of the rubber grip is the left and right slider switches adds even more functionality to your models. These switches are strategically placed for easy access by the pilot during flight. The goal here is to create a transmitter that you don't have to feel to control. Instead your hands find the controls naturally and without conscious thought. 
You fly by instinct and not by feel and fumble. On the lower left side of the DX9, we find the slot for the DX9's SD memory card, providing the ability to perform software updates or unload and load model control setups. You can store an unlimited number of aircraft setups using the SD card. The DX9 sports a permanent antenna tower that is also backed up by a secondary antenna placed within the carrying handle, providing signal diversification for a more solid link to the aircraft during flight. You no longer have to worry about which way the antenna is pointing. I mentioned that the spring tension of the control gimbals are adjustable and the DX9 allows these adjustments through the access ports located on the rear casing. Below the carry handle is a plug port for the use of headphones to keep your private, your voice alerts or telemetry information. Next to the headphone jack is a plug port for the buddy box training cord. However, you may not need to use this cable as the DX9 features a wireless buddy box trainer system that frees you from being tethered to your student, making training easier and with less hassle. At the bottom of the case is a battery box cover. Inside the DX9 comes equipped with a 2000 milliamp lithium based battery pack for the ability to fly all day long. The charger is built into the DX9 and it is automatic, meaning it will shut off automatically when the battery is fully charged. Note, despite being equipped with an automatic charger, for your safety, never leave a charging battery unattended. Now that you've been taking around the DX9 to see what it looks like, you get to see the beauty of this radio is more than just skin deep. What truly makes the DX9 shine is a software that allows a radio incredible versatility. Some of the highlights include wireless buddy box system, telemetry capability, servo sequencing, 250 model capacity, multi-point mixing, servo balancing, voice alerts with custom alerts and changeable voice style, two and three-way timers, channel assignment from the receiver and the transmitter, trim set adjustment, throttle curves, throttle cut, pre-flight checklist, and more. There's no doubt that the DX9 is one of the most versatile and feature-packed nine-channel radios ever produced. It has great balance and tactile feel, plus so many features that you may find that this radio has more capability than you can use. But that's all right. At least you know you won't be outgrowing this radio anytime soon. I hope that you've enjoyed our short tour of the Spectrum DX9 radio system. I personally have flown the DX9 in competition, and it has made a real difference in my ability to perform better. It fits my hands better, which allows me to concentrate more on flying than wondering if my fingers will be able to move the sticks the way I need to. If this sounds like your kind of radio, then drop by the local hobby shop who sells Spectrum Live radio equipment and check one out. For Team Horizon, I'm Mike Lee. This has been a Team Tech Tour for you. Thanks for taking the tour with us.